concerned me, and uh, and I wanted to uh, kind of to do a little teaching, if you don't mind, kind of doing a little lecture. I'm going I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the '70s uh, when I was a, uh, a history teacher, and uh, I did I, I taught history for a number of years, and uh, I graduated from the University of Georgia from. Uh, Leconte Hall, uh, which is uh, at that time was the uh, second highest ranked history department in, in the United States. And uh, only the University of Virginia was ranked higher than the University of Georgia in history. And, uh, and so uh, that was my love, and that's what I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach history. Now, I taught history for a few years. I taught at Brunswick High School, and, and, uh, and I had kept applying to get back to my alma mater at Glen Academy, but, uh, uh, but uh, they never had an opening there in, in the history department while I was, while I had that call on my life to be a history teacher. And, uh, but God had, God had other plans for me. And so, and so uh, God knew better than, than to put me there, but my love has always been history. And I did a lot of, lot of research in history I was headed up the archaeology department at the University of Georgia. I was also the president of the archaeology department through Brunswick Junior College. And, uh, and uh, I did a lot of research and uh, excavation. We uncovered the largest burial mound on St. Simon's Island, which most people don't even know is there, right down from the village where the, the uh, Dairy Queen used to be. But out there in that park, we uncovered and did excavation for three months out there. Twenty-seven Indian burials that are that are out there, and and uh, and they were they were prior uh, they were prior to uh, uh, to to the arrival of Columbus, and uh, they were of the uh, of the Wally uh, Indians that uh, lived along the the coast back then. So so I uh, I've done a lot of history. That was my love, and then of course I got saved, and my love changed. And uh, but I still love history. It's just that I love history out of the Word of God today, and uh, uh, more than I do of the of the other things. And uh, but uh, but but I wanted to share with you some things. If I'm going to just kind of lapse back into my history days and talk a little bit about history, about the history that most people don't know. And the reason they don't know it is because it's no longer taught. But there is a lot of history that people don't understand about America. Amen. And, and, and it's because the liberalization of history books changed. I saw that change when I was leaving uh, and decided to quit teaching in 1975. I saw that change in the history books. I saw many things change, what was there back when I studied history compared to what I was teaching. So many things were, were gone. It, but something, something really rattled my, my mind a few years ago. And around the year 2000, a book was found. A book was found in Spain in the archives of the ancient mariners, all of these ancient explorers that went all over the world, all of their log books are still kept, still kept in Spain. You can go back and find all of the explorers all the way from Columbus in 1492, all the way through to the New World and so on. All of the explorers out of Spain, all of their books, all of their log books, all of their records are still just as they pinned them. And they're still right there in all the archives. And you can actually go in there and that you they won't hand you the book and let you check it out. But standing there between two people, they'll help you uh, change pages. But you can sit there and read those things. In the year 2000, something miraculously happened. In all of those books, there all of a sudden they found a book that they had not seen in over 500 years. A book appeared in all of those
those archives. And the name of it was the Book of Prophecy, written by Christopher Columbus. And it had been lost when he wrote it in the year 1501 or 1502. And it had not been seen until somebody in moving those books found it in about the year 2000. The Book of Prophecies by Christopher Columbus. Most people didn't know and most people don't know in history it does not tell the truth about Christopher Columbus, but this book does. And in fact, a lot of things that most people don't know today about the founding of America, most people will never know it because it's not in the history books that are being taught to the children today. Amen. Columbus has been made a villain. He's been made a villain because they say he came over for, for gold and glory. And, and those two things were never never in all of his writings were never foremost in his mind. They were in the mind of the king of Spain and the queen of Spain, which sent him here, but they were never in the mind of Columbus. Columbus came for the other G, God. You see, the, the king wanted gold and the king wanted glory, but Christopher Columbus wanted God. And he says so, and he writes in his books that, that his desire was to, to bring Jesus Christ to, to all of the Indies. And when he talked about the Indies, he was talking about India. He thought he was going to try to find a route to India. And he told the king and queen of Spain, I think instead of going east like we've been going, if I go west, I can find a quicker route to India. And then he set sail and they, they took off and you know the story of, of the three little ships. Columbus owned two of them, the Nina and the Santa Maria. The Pinta was leased by Columbus. He leased the captain, he leased the crew, and those three ships set sail on August the 3rd of 1492. They headed over and they headed out across the Atlantic trying to find a route to India. And as they sailed after 32 days, there was, there was turmoil among the crews. The crews wanted to leave. They were 32 days and we haven't found anything. And they were wanting to turn around. And in fact, the Pinta did. The Pinta, the lease ship, that the one that he had rented, that captain said, enough is enough. And they turned around and went back to Spain, leaving, leaving Columbus with just two ships. The Santa Maria, the big one, and the Nina, the small one. Here they fought uh, the people wanting to leave, but Columbus kept saying, I know God is sending me here. And he writes in this book, I have a mission and I'm on God's mission and he is looking for. And what Columbus wanted to do was to fulfill the prophecies of the Bible. And he wrote it. He said, I've got to do this. On October the 12th, 1492, land was spotted. It was the Bahamas. But he didn't know anything about the Bahamas, so they called them the Indies, thinking they were in India. That's where the name comes, Indians. And so they assumed they were there in India. And in fact, when he lands on the first island, they named that place San Salvador, meaning the Republic of the Savior. And there he said, this is my mission to take Jesus Christ to the world. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what he desired to do was to win people to Jesus Christ. Christopher Columbus is named after St. Christopher, meaning the Christ bearer. And he looked at this as a calling upon his life, that he was to take Christ to them. He was to spread Christ to all the known world. In December of the 24th, 
Christmas Eve, 1492, the, the Santa Maria struck a, struck a coral reef right off of the Bahamas. It was very shallow water, only a few feet deep, but it tore a big hole in the ship, and the ship sank, and they could not repair it. So they, they abandoned the ship that left Columbus with just the one little tiny ship, the Nina. And so they took the people off the Santa Maria and they, they took everything off the ship and they moved it upon this, this island. And there they, they began to take all the boards off of this ship and they built, they built a fort. And he named it La Navidad. Uh, named it the Nativity. And so he says, I'm going to have to leave you here and I'll go back and get help and I'll bring more ships. And he did. And Columbus sailed back to Spain, leaving leaving that, that little ship sunk there and all of those people and the fort, La Navidad. And there he went and he got help and he got ships and then he sailed back to the Bahamas and when he got there the Indians had killed all the all the men that were left. Everything was gone. Columbus, however, realized that his mission was to spread Jesus Christ to the known world. He was not here for what people have said he came for. He was not looking for gold. He was looking to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, he was under huge pressure from the king and the queen to ship back gold. But he never shipped back gold. They didn't find gold until the Spanish arrived and went into Mexico. That's where they found the gold. That's where they shipped it back. But Columbus never discovered gold in the Bahamas. Have you ever heard of gold mines down in the Bahamas? There were no gold down there. But yet that's where he sailed in the few years that he traveled from island to island to island. He went there looking for, for an opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to heathens all across those islands. Finally, in 1500, Columbus was arrested by the king and the queen of Spain. They sent an army uh, on a ship to arrest him and take him back, claiming that he was hoarding the gold, that he was not sending the gold back. And they carried him back in chains. And he spent the last two years of his life uh, on house arrest. But it was during this house arrest that he wrote the book, the book of prophecies. And what does all of this history have to do with church service this morning? Some of you, I look into your face and you're thinking, I, I graduated from, from history a long time ago. I'm here for church today. Well, I'm here to tell you that that history and church have a lot to do with one another. That's right. There's a lot of things that we... You, what, what Christopher Columbus did and what Christopher Cl Columbus brought to this new world is why you and I are in church today. You see, there's something that he wrote in his journal that when I read it, it really jumped out at me. And I began to look and think, this man was on to something. Listen to something that he wrote. I only brought out a few little things here that I want to share with you today. But he wrote this. He said this, that Christianity had to be spread across the world before Jesus Christ could come back. He said Christianity had to be spread across the world before Jesus Christ could come back. And that's what he was doing. Matthew 24, 14 said this, 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You see, what he said was exactly what Matthew said. It has to be spread across the world before Jesus Christ can come back. Christopher Columbus saw himself as a missionary to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. He wrote something else I always found interesting. I'm still digging in this one. He wrote that the Garden of Eden had to be found before Jesus Christ could come back. Boy, I've been digging on that one for a while. I've gone in there and asked question after question on Google and, uh, and, and still can't get the answer to that one. But he saw something that talks about it. And the closest that I can come to that one is that on the last chapter of the book of Revelation, it says that when the new world will appear, the new heaven and the new Jerusalem, the new earth, it, the Bible says that flowing out of the new Jerusalem was a garden, a garden with, with, with water pouring out of it and all, the, and all the, the, the fruit and the food that people would eat forever and ever and ever. And he and so he says he says here in this one and, and that that this garden had to be found before Christ could come back. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave that one alone right now. But he also wrote this in this book of prophecies. He wrote that there was going to be a great crusade that would take back the Holy Land from the Muslims. And he wrote that in 1502. That there would be a crusade to remove the Muslims from the Holy Land. We know that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob was given the Holy Land for an everlasting covenant. That's right. And they've lost it. And, and that part of the world is still controlled by, by many different groups in which most powerful are, are the Islamic people. And yet there is a time coming. There is a time coming that, that they will be removed from the Holy Land. And then he wrote this one. And I like this one. And in fact, I'm going to stop on this one. But I'm not going to stop talking. I'm just going to stop on what he wrote here. He wrote this. That a world emperor must be chosen to drive the Muslims out of Jerusalem and to prepare Jerusalem for the return of Jesus Christ. He said a, a world emperor had to be chosen uh, uh, to, to drive the Muslims out of Jerusalem so to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And do you know that's actually going to happen there is a world emperor perhaps on the scene right now, perhaps not, I don't know. But I do know that the Antichrist, it says, will be chosen. He will come from the Middle East and he will drive them out of the Holy Land to prepare his army for the des destruction of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will try to prevent Christ from returning. And boy, that's going to be a, another war that's going to be interesting. It, it, it's it's all of this is all of this is happening, and all of this is it, it are the writings of Columbus in 1502. And yet, do you think you'll find any of this in a history book today? It, it, Columbus knew about the coming of the Antichrist. He spent many years studying the book of Revelation. He spent many years studying the Old Testament prophecies and he saw himself as fulfilling some of these prophecies. America was discovered, folks. America was discovered 
by God. He brought Columbus here. He brought this man. This man could have gone as all others went to the east and found India. But he chose to go west against all of the teachings, against everybody's recommendation. He chose to come this way. And there's no doubt in my mind that his direction was led by God. God wanted him to discover this land. He's been made a villain. He's been made a glory hound. He's been made, he's been made one that has brought that brought destruction to the Indian culture and everything else. God sent him here to bring Christianity to this world. He brought Christianity over here. Do you realize that what, what he did, what Columbus did, was that he brought America into Christianity. And America is God's factory for missionaries to go all over this world. Amen. America is the printing press for Bibles to go all over this world. America is the storehouse for food to be sent and feed people all over this world. Amen. America is the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines for the defense of innocent people all over this world. This country was founded by Christopher Columbus to bring the power of God to this whole world. That's what Columbus did. He, he came here with a purpose, and that was to bring power to a Christian nation to defend against the world that was going farther and farther away from God. We used to be called a Christian nation. Without us, without us, Nazism would have exterminated the Jewish people. Without us, communism would have enslaved the world. Without us, the Japanese would have conquered the Pacific Ocean. Without us, there would be no churches, there would be no synagogues, there would be no Bibles. We are the purpose. That's why God brought Columbus here to establish a nation that Christians would come and Christians would build and we would become God's people. The liberals have destroyed it. The liberals have destroyed the teaching. Uh, the liberals have destroyed the history books. The liberals have tried to get rid of the word of God. But let me tell you something. America was founded by God to bring Christianity to this world. And we are going to stand on the cross of Calvary as long as I can stand in this pulpit. And we will preach and teach the word Jesus Christ to all of those that come in. This nation was founded on the cross of Calvary. I'll stand on the cross of Calvary. We'll preach the cross of Calvary. And we do so because we were given the freedom to do so by a man that brought Christianity to this part of the world. Amen. Amen. This man came for a purpose. They made him a villain, but he's not. America was chosen by God to uh, to spread the cross of Calvary around this world. God's not pleased with the pride of sin. God's not pleased with the murder of 4,150 unborn children every day, 365 days a year, including Christmas. Greater numbers of slaughtering unborn babies than all of the heathen nations that sacrificed children. And if God dealt with them, do you think God's going to just somehow overlook us? Amen. We've got to stand for America. We've got to be Americans. We've got to understand where we came from and what we are. We're God's chosen people, and we need to stand for that. That's the reason why God said this. He said in the book of Revelation, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, talking about the Antichrist, 
and to overcome them. And power was given him over the kindred and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose, whose names are not found written in the book of life. Let me ask you something. Is your name written in the book of life? It better be. Because what, what God said here is those that will worship the Antichrist are those that are not found written in the book of life. My name is written down in the book of life because there was a day in my life that I came home from work and fell down on my knees in my living room and looked up to heaven and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ that day. And I said, dear God, forgive me a sinner. And I accept you and you alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you are trusting on getting there through some other means, you can be the goodest person in all the goodest world. You can be a volunteer in every organization out there. It will not open the door to heaven. That's right. The only thing that opens the door to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. And you've got to believe on him and him alone as being the only way to salvation. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus said. If you don't believe that, throw the, throw the uh, Bible into the trash can and walk away. I let a man to the Lord Jesus Christ over in Waynesville one day by t doing that very thing. He said, I just don't believe. I think there's got to be another way. And I picked up my Bible and I threw it all the way across the parking lot. And he stood there shocked. And I said, well, it says in there that he's the only way. And if it's not true, then I don't want that book. Really? And he walked over there and picked it up and brought it back to me. And he handed it through the window of the car because I'd already got in the car and was going to leave. I really wasn't going to leave, but he didn't know that. <laughs> and he handed it back through that window. He said, Preacher, I believe it. I believe it. Do you believe that he's the only way? That's what, that's what Columbus believed. He believed he was the only way to heaven. If you believe, he says, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and you will not follow this Antichrist. I don't ever think that even we'll see the Antichrist. Yeah. We'll be gone before he ever even steps foot out amongst all the other people. Amen. I don't think I'll ever even know who he is, but... I'm glad to know that my name is written in the book of life. Amen. This world, this world will follow him. This world will go after him. Yet, folks, we need to bring America back to God. Amen. I look around in my community today and my police officers are now going to be community activists. They're going to ride around in little short pants on bicycles and being friends to everybody in the community. Well, let me tell you something. When you get in trouble one day and you need the cops, call them and wait for the little bicycle patrol to get there. No, I want two police cars with 280-pound cops getting out of that police car, loaded down with body armor. That's who I want. I don't want community activists. We need to get back to some serious Americanism today. We need to get back in being serious about, about having God back in this country. We wouldn't be going through all of this nonsense if we worshiped God the way we should. Nuclear war is going to hit the Middle East and we're going to do nothing about it. You, you can mark this down. Here's a Flash from heaven. Not really. This is a flash in my in my mind that wanders off sometimes. 
But you know what? We're going to see things that are going to happen in America that's going to distract us so much. There's no way that we're going to interfere in the Middle East. Amen. They got plans to, to do things, I believe, in cities right now that we have no clue what's going to happen. There's enemies that are pouring in across our borders and right in. They don't even need to come across the border anymore. They can just they can just fly right into New York City and take a bus down anywhere they want to. But things are things are going to get bad in America if we don't get our mind back on God. The reason is of what God said. He said, if my people if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. But he's not going to do that. He's not going to heal this land until America gets back on its knees. That's right. And I'm not sure we'll ever see that. I think America has abandoned Israel, Amen. and that's the kiss of death for this country. That's right. I believe America is going to sit by and watch, watch the Islamic nations attack Israel, just like Columbus said. I believe with all of my heart that Israel is going to have to defend itself by itself, and just like just like the Bible says, and God at that time will put hooks in the jaws of the nation of the north and drag them down into that war. That's right. And most people think that's Russia. And if Russia invades Israel, we will sit by and do nothing because the cities of this nation will be attacked from within by bombs. There's so much enemy right here within our own country. Have you ever noticed that in every mall, in every city in America, there are kiosks run by foreign people? Imagine what's going to happen when all of those kiosks all at the same time, level those malls. Have you ever noticed all of these people that are flocking into the inner, inner cities all across America? Imagine at the same time that all of those malls go, things happen within those cities. We're not going to send help to Israel. We're going to be sending, we're going to be sending help to ourselves. People are going to be demanding protection from within. Can I prove all of this? I'm just talking off the top of my head. But I thought it was interesting that Columbus said, you know, this Middle Eastern thing is all about the Jews and the Muslims. And he said that in 1502. And he said, and they're going to try to move those Muslims out and it's going to be a war. That's right. And he said that in 1502. Amen. But the book disappeared until the year 2000. A lot of things are, a lot of things are going to happen in this country today. On this Fourth of July, we've got we need to pray for America. Amen. We don't have America anymore, do we? It, it, we have we have ethnic countries: the Italians, we have the English, we have the French. We have the we have the Spanish. Dial one for Spanish. Dial two for English. 
Now, three for Portuguese. Everybody's got their own flags. Years ago, people came to this country to learn English That's right. mm -hmm. and to live under the American flag. Today, they want to come to America, enjoy the benefits, and have you speak their language and recognize their flag. America has lost a lot of things. College professors are destroying the minds of college students who are becoming teachers and destroying the minds of of students who are destroying the minds of their children who have no use for America today. That's right. And yet they want the, the check. It's a lot of things are going on in the world today. And I'm afraid and we need if we don't get back to Christ if we don't get back to Jesus Christ, we're going to we're going to have a mess on our hands soon. I pray, I pray for America. I love this country. I grew up in this country. I served this country. But I'm telling you, I worry that we're going to lose we're going to lose a lot if we don't if we don't stand up and preach Jesus Christ. Our only hope is Jesus Christ. Our only hope is that we can turn America back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's going to take all of us, not me. It's going to take every one of us to be the Christians that we need to be, to share Christ with our friends and our neighbors and our country. We need to be Christians in all that we do. And I pray that we will. Pray that we will live our lives the way that God would have.